Hi guys, this is Jack from Legend Systems. I uh, just wanted to do a brief demonstration how to rip and record DVDs, a popular request amongst uh, new Linux users. So, um, what I wanted to show first was if you're having an issue playing DVDs out of the box, say you've tried to install Linux yourself, um, here's one way that uh, you, can, you can possibly get that going. Uh, works pretty well. Now if you have the Legend Systems upgrade on your machine, as in I've done it for you, then you won't have to worry about it. This will already be taken care of, so you can go ahead and skip this step. Um, if you are, however, go ahead and open the Ubuntu Software Center. And then do a quick search for lib, as in library, then dvd, css, as in cascading style sheet. Now down here at the bottom it says simple foundation for reading DVDs runtime libraries. Go ahead and click on that, and if you do not have that installed, this will say install. You will click on that and then input your root password or your user password, and it will go ahead and install. Now, if you continue to have some issues immediately after that, um, I noticed if you leave your DVD in and then install the package and then try and play the DVD, it will have some problems. So, simplest thing to do is close your movie uh, player, eject your DVD, put it back in, and try it again. Um, it seems to have worked every time so far. So, on to the good part. As you see here under sound and video, we don't really have anything for ripping DVDs. We do have Handbrake, which will record DVDs to a particular video format. Say you wanted to take the DVD to go on your iPhone, iPod, whatever you have it. Um, otherwise, what you want to do is go to Ubuntu Software Center, again, and the program we're looking for is K9 Copy. So do a quick search for that. Go ahead and click install. Input your password. <laughs> Wait for it to download and install. is a fairly decently sized program, so it may take a little bit depending on your internet connection. And I'm going to go ahead and pause this screencast while this is going, and I will see you guys as soon as this is done. Okay, so now that we have K9 Copy installed, uh, we want to go to Applications and sound and video and here you'll see that we now have K9 Copy and K9 Copy Assistant installed. Um, typically we want to do the Assistant as it's wizard based and makes the whole process a lot easier. So we'll go ahead and open that. We can close this software center. And selecting the source of the backup, typically it's going to be the DVD drive. At least for the sake of this video it will be. Go ahead and hit Next. Now select the destination of the backup. Now, theoretically, it is possible to do a backup directly to disk, where it will load the, it will rip the movie to a temporary directory and then burn it back onto a disk and then remove the temporary files. However, I have noticed that there are some issues with this and doesn't work quite as well as it could. Um, so, for kind of to make it easier, basically, we just want to do it to an ISO image. Now, I also recommend this if you intend to keep. Uh, the, the backup of the movie in a digital format or in a archive format permanently, which is not a bad idea, especially if you have an external hard drive or something to that effect. Now, this here asks where you want to save the ISO image of the movie. And you can leave it directly in the root of your home directory, or you can click the little folder to change it, and double-click on videos. <coughs> it makes it a little easier to find in the future to remove or copy to another location just makes a little more sense to put it there. So hit save. Now you see it's in the videos directory. Go ahead and hit next. Now this here will show you a list of all the titles that are available on the DVD. Um, the most important thing to look for here is the length of the title in question. What you're looking for is the main part of the movie, which is obviously an hour and 58 minutes. Um, the rest of this is going to be documentary stuff like that. Now if you're not sure what something is, you can always click on the preview button down here, which will start a little miniature preview of what's going on. Now if you decide you need some of this, go ahead and keep it, otherwise don't. Um, I recommend not keeping it. Most DVDs are in an 8 gig 
format, uh, double layer DVD, and you're ripping this down to a single layer DVD, which is 4.7 gigs. Um, one of the ways to increase the quality of that is to remove any extra stuff that you don't need. So if you remove these titles, it will give Title One more space or more room on the DVD to increase the quality. So remove all the junk that you don't need. Okay, once that's done, go ahead and hit next. And this here will tell you what subtitles and audio options are available on the DVD as well. Um, typically, don't need any of the subtitles that aren't in the English or the <laughs> aren't in the language you speak anyway. Uh, mine happens to be English, of course. <laughs> so, I also don't need French audio. I don't plan on listening to the movie in French. <coughs> you can also choose to keep six channel audio or two channel audio or both if you prefer. Um, I would recommend keeping both as it will keep compatibility with a broader variety of stereo systems. So it's not really a big deal. Go ahead and hit next. Copy the original menus. This is something that I like to do to keep the movie feeling as authentic as possible even though it is a copy. Um, now if you want you know, the movie to start playing as soon as you put it in your device, simply select Don't Copy Menus, and when you put the DVD in your DVD player, it will instantly start playing the video. That's completely up to you. The options for the title, this is the shrink factor. Now, typically this is automatically done for you, so on a 4.7 gig disc, this should fit fine. Um, we could expand it just a little bit to make it a little bigger. So it's 4.3 or 4,390 instead of whatever it was before. Yep, 4,325. So you get a slightly better quality. Not a whole lot because it is designed to, you know, scale movies down to a single layer DVD format anyway. But uh, typically you can leave this as default and you'll be fine. Uh, if you want to get as extra as much extra quality as possible, then go ahead and do the change factor and size it up as big as you can. Next, you would hit finish, <coughs> and it will start the DVD backup to an ISO image file. Now, this does take some time, uh, anywhere between 20 and 45 minutes, depending on your computer. Um, I'd also like to apologize for the DVD sounds that you're hearing on the microphone. This is all on my cheesy little laptop here, so apologize. Now, I'm going to go ahead and stop the movie now and start up again once this copy is done and show you how to do the rest. All right, thanks, guys. Hang in there. Okay, now that that's done, you should be presented with this message, DVD printing finished, go ahead and hit OK. That'll close K9 copy. Now all we need to do is eject movie, and I'm going to apologize again for the sounds from my DVD drive. They're kind of irritating when I'm reviewing the videos, but I don't really know what to do about them at the present time. wait for that to load up here. Okay, now that we have this, we can just go ahead and cancel here. Click back on Applications, go to System and Video, and the Brazero Disk Burner. Now this is where we're going to choose the ISO image to burn to the DVD. So we go to Burn Image, it asks to select where the image is. We browse to videos where we saved the image. Double click on the ISO, Serenity. And it already sees that there's the blank DVD and that there's plenty of free space on the disk. Uh, this little blue in the background here, depending on what theme you have, um, the space here is the empty space on the disk that's left over. So there is enough space on the disk for the movie. Now we just go ahead and hit burn, and it will start its thing. I'll go ahead and wait for this to actually give us a progress bar on the recording. And there you go. It's actually started burning the DVD to the disc, and I'm going to go ahead and pause the screencast until that's done. Uh, it will take some time, as usual. Now, this always takes a little while, guys. So, Anyway, uh, I will see you guys when this is done, and I'll show you how it works. Thanks. 
Okay, it's just about done. Just finalizing the DVD now. It shouldn't take too long. <laughs> Sorry about the text there, guys. <laughs> I think it's done. Hopefully. All right. So you may get a few errors because it'll kind of unmount and then remount the DVD and then it'll eject it. So it'll try and play it and then eject it right away. Just go ahead and close everything that's open. Don't worry about it. Close your media player and go ahead and just pop it back in. And I'm just doing this to show you guys that it does indeed work. Give it a minute to load. And there you go. You can see the movie is playing. Probably heard it as well. <laughs> it seems to be working just fine. We'll go ahead and let the menu start, and I'll go ahead and hit play so you guys can actually see that the menu does work. Now this should work just like normal in a regular DVD player as well. So not only will it work on your computer, you can pop it into your TV DVD player and watch your movie. This is great for backing up your DVDs that you already own um, to keep a backup copy and keep the original in good condition. And there you go. You can see the movie is playing. And that concludes the screencast. Congratulations, guys. You just copied a DVD onto a portable DVD. Well, if you have any questions, post them back on the comments of this video, and I look forward to uh, posting new screencasts. If you guys have any suggestions on any new screencasts that you would like to see, instructional videos, let me know, and we'll get that taken care of for you. All right, thanks.